Disneyland has zero chill when it comes to really good theme park food, so what items should you be prioritizing for your upcoming West Coast trip? We got our favorite sweet, salty, and downright delicious items for you to add to your must-eats itinerary here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. We're on the West Coast today eating the best food around Disneyland. We've got sweets, we've got entrees, we've got 100 Years of Wonder specialty items, we've got the holiday goodies. Basically, what I'm trying to say is after today's video, you're gonna be all set. Special shout out to number 13 on this list and the absolute drama it's caused among the DFB team. You will see what I mean. Of course, we are starting today with something that I wouldn't just consider to be one of my favorite Disney snacks of all time, but also one of my favorite desserts, period. Trolley Treats Candy Shop and Bing Bong Sweet Stuff, Marceline Confectionery and Candy Palace too are usually the proud keepers of the churro toffee. These generous squares of toffee are each topped with cinnamon sugar just like a churro, wrapped in white chocolate and then topped with cinnamon sugar. What else can I say? This is love at first bite. The toffee is buttery and crunchy and worth the visit to any of these candy stores to get. Now this is something that I usually get a whole stack of them and I bring them home, then I put them in Ziploc bags and I eat them for a very long time. They're so, so good. And don't forget, sometimes in the fall, they have pumpkin spice churro toffee, which is well worth grabbing as well. All right, next one is the peanut butter sandwich. Sorry, I had to include this. Now, this isn't something you whip up real quick and stuff in your kid's lunchbox. This peanut butter sandwich is one worthy enough to make my top Disneyland eats for sure. It's probably the first thing I found in Disneyland that I already knew I loved because they used to have this in Disney World too. Now it's been gone from Disney World for a very long time, probably about 15 years, but it's been holding steady in Disneyland. Now this can be found at most of these candy stores as well. It's actually kind of a catfish since it's not really a sandwich at all. It's a candy bar like dessert filled with soft peanut butter and peanuts for an extra layer of crunch and it's topped with a red mickey made out of white chocolate now this used to be a sandwich sandwich like it was two graham crackers filled with peanut butter and the whole thing was dunked in chocolate but when they kind of did a revamp of it the top graham cracker went away and now it's just a bunch of peanut butter on top of a lower level graham cracker <laughs> covered in chocolate now i'm not saying this is going to look exactly like i just described this dessert likes to experiment after all like we've seen we've seen it look rather plain we've seen it with a dark chocolate mickey topper instead of a white chocolate one we've seen it with a red one we've seen peanuts sprinkled on the outside too Regardless, if you see an item in the bakery display case labeled as a peanut butter sandwich, rest assured, whatever it might look like, you are in for a treat. These are the ones that I get at the candy store and I take them back to my hotel room and I just eat them all by myself. All right, Disney California Adventures Festival food booths come in at number three on our list. So DCA loves to party, and there are three different DCA festivals that bring forth exclusive entertainment and food booths annually, including Lunar New Year during the beginning of the year, that's a shorter one, Food and Wine Festival during the spring, and Disney Festival of Holidays during the tail end of the year. Now, a little bit of trivia here for you. Disneyland has Festival of Holidays. Disney World has Festival of the Holidays. So there you go. Now, I'm not kidding when I say DCA's festival food booths give Epcot's a run for their money. DCA always seems to have at least a dozen odd food and snack options we are wildly impressed with, and I honestly like their festivals a little better than Epcot's festivals. I don't know what to tell you. A few of our past favorites have included the Purple Yam Macaron for Lunar New Year, the Smoked Honey Habanero Chicken Wings for Food and Wine, which come from a booth called Cluckadoodle Moo, which is just fabulous, and their chicken wings are always good no matter what the flavors, and the Holiday Ham Slider featuring ham, cranberry bacon jam, Gruyere on a salt and pepper brioche bun for Festival of Holidays. I also love the beer cheese soup when they have it for food and wine. If they do, go ahead and grab it. They serve it in a little tiny sourdough bread bowl. Now, one way that DCA really does show up Epcot during their festivals is that you have the option of buying the Sip and Savor Pass, which will give you a lanyard with eight entitlement tabs that you can spend on multiple participating festival food items. Now, you can normally purchase the Sip and Savor Pass at specific festival kiosk, which the Disneyland website will inform you of ahead of time, and so will we. But the other thing that DCA has over Epcot every single time is that at Disney California Adventure Festivals, you can purchase all of the food you want to purchase at one booth 
and then you can just go pick it up at the other booths where they make it. So this is unbelievable because that means you don't have to wait in unbelievably long lines at every single booth. You find the booth with the shortest line, you go stand in that line and you order everything you want from the festival at that one cash register. Then you just have a little receipt and you take it to all the different booths that have the things that you purchased and you can skip the long lines and just go right up to the booth and get the food. Really, it is such a good system and I do not know why Epcot doesn't do this. Okay, next up is the Grey Stuff from Red Rose Tavern. The Grey Stuff Gateau at Disneyland's Red Rose Tavern quick service is iconic to say the least. So this dessert is made on a shortbread cookie topped with a bit of red velvet cake that's encased in swirls of cookies and cream mousse. And we tend to prefer this version of the Grey Stuff over the version in Magic Kingdom that you can find in Gaston's Tavern and Be Our Guest Restaurant just because there's more flavor variety to it. The red velvet and shortbread help break up the creamy cookies and cream mousse, making this a fun and light treat for everybody. They also do fun things with this seasonally, so it's always going to be the gray stuff, but they're going to change the color and they're going to do different things with it for Halloween and Christmas, etc. and maybe add some extra ingredients. So it really does change up a bunch. Super fun. All right, seasonal bread pudding from Pacific Wharf Cafe. Sounds boring? tastes amazing. Pacific Wharf is changing in Disney California Adventure, and I'm going to let you know how this will impact the foods you choose once these major changes have been made. This area of DCA is currently being rethemed to San Francisco based on the Disney animated film Big Hero 6. The rethemed land is expected to be completed later this summer and will feature the San Francisco Gate Bridge, new Asian-inspired dining selections, and a Baymax meet and greet. But Here's how this is gonna impact our classic favorite eats and treats from this area. It's not, at least it's not supposed to. Disney has said that the fan favorite dining locations in this area, including Pacific Wharf Cafe, should remain open and should have all of our favorite goodies. And that includes those baked bread bowls from Pacific Wharf Cafe. And on that note, let's talk about one of my favorite types of breads here, the seasonal bread pudding. So it's hard to narrow this down. We've had so many great options in the past here. They change it up every couple of months. We've had the lemon and wild blueberry, the cherry cheesecake, the strawberry shortcake, the apple fritter, the chocolate espresso. I could keep going, but in summary, lots of flavors. Each of these bread puddings is served warm and becomes a nice sweet treat to either split with someone else in your group or hoard all to yourself because we are not going to judge. We're just glad to know that although the Pacific Wharf area is about to look different, our freshly baked bread items will still be sticking around. Now let's go to a classic why have just a regular size Mickey waffle when you can get a giant Mickey waffle? So for the most part, the giant Mickey waffle is pretty straightforward. It's your typical Mickey waffle and comes with a side of either Applewood smoked bacon or hickory smoked sausage over there at Carnation Cafe right on Main Street, USA. But the real reason you're going to want to eat here, aside from the food tasting delicious, is because it's a classic restaurant. It's iconic. It is rich with Disney history. Walt has been here. Carnation Cafe has been around since since Disneyland opened back in 1955. And so of course Walt has been there. And speaking of Disney legends, this is also where chef Oscar Martinez worked for over 60 years, making him the record holder of the longest tenured Disneyland cast member. Chef Oscar retired back in 2017, but even during his last few years working at Carnation Cafe, you could still find him out and about waving to guests and shooting the breeze with all who were willing to lend an ear. Chef Oscar was a delight to have in the parks and we dearly miss his smiling face and culinary expertise. The amount of dedication he had for this job was nothing short of admirable. And you can still go to Carnation Cafe in the morning, sit down, have breakfast, and enjoy that giant Mickey waffle that's been there forever. All right, the next thing we want to talk about is the It's Lemon from Adorable Snowman Frosted Treats over there in Pixar Pier. Is it blasphemous for someone to claim that this treat is better than Pineapple Dole Whip? I don't know. You tell me because the non-dairy lemon soft serve you're going to find at Adorable Snowman Frosted Treats in Pixar Pier is just as refreshing as it is questionable. Come on, the It's Lemon exclamation seems pretty sus to me, but I'll let it slide for now. There are several ways you can order the lemon soft serve here. You can get it plain or swirled with the soft serve mango option or mixed into the Pixar Pier Frosty Parfait with a blue raspberry swirl. You can even add some blue curacao out of that one if you want to try the alcoholic version. But I think I prefer to have my lemon treat snow capped with that white chocolate hard shell. The tanginess and sweetness just complement each other really well. I love the combo of textures. 
But be wary of these treats. If you order them on a super hot day, they will melt fast. And since there's really no shade around this little kiosk, you're going to have to eat it fast too. My favorite thing is to go right at the end of the night when they're starting to close. It's really fun to grab my snow topped lemon and just go wander the pier and it doesn't melt too fast at night. Okay, we're heading back to Disneyland for the potato and cheddar cheeseburger at Hungry Bear. I've said it time and again, it's hard to mess up cheesy potatoes, but when you add cheesy potatoes to a Disneyland quick service burger, they hit it spot on. The new potato and cheddar cheeseburger at Hungry Bear Restaurant in Critter Country is one of several exclusive Disneyland snack offerings made specifically for the 100 Years of Wonder celebration, which honors the Walt Disney Company's 100 year anniversary. This is a one third pound Angus Chuck patty with green chili, bacon cheddar sauce, and crispy potato planks, aka hash browns, on a brioche bun. There's a lot of good things to say about this one. The burger patty is juicy, the potato planks are crispy and spicy, and the cheese is nice and melty. Not to mention the brioche bun comes slightly toasted too, which helps hold all these ingredients together without threatening the structural integrity of the witch. Quick note though, when I say the potatoes are spicy, I'm not talking about a subtle kick of heat. It can be a pretty powerful bout of spice for those who aren't expecting it. So if you're not a fan of extra heat, you might be better off with a standard Hungry Bear burger instead of the specialty one. But keep an eye on Hungry Bear. This is where you're going to get your Mickey beignets right now while they're still finishing up Tiana's Palace restaurant. This is also where you're going to often find seasonal funnel cakes that are absolutely incredible. So don't sleep on Hungry Bear. Get over there. There's lots of outdoor seating, but it's undercover, so you're going to be okay from the rain in most of the places and you can also watch all of those people paddling their canoes on the rivers of america and cheer them on as they are getting good exercise and you are eating burgers so we threw out a savory hundred years of wonder option to you so how about a sweet one now to balance things out the snickers sunday at disney california adventure is made with butter pecan ice cream then topped with a chocolate shell caramel sauce whipped cream chopped peanuts and snickers bar pieces all inside a waffle cup Basically, even if the Snickers were sprinkled on top, the sundae would still give us major Snickers vibes. The chocolate shell, caramel sauce, and peanuts were meant to be together, and the waffle bowl comes out warm. Cold ice cream, warm waffle bowl, Snickers flavoring, yeah. This 100 Years of Wonder offering is a big win in our book, but don't worry, there's plenty at Clarabelle's for you to try. If the Snickers sundae is not your jam, they've also got those customizable ice cream bars that you can basically top with whatever you want. It's super fun. They've got tons of other sundaes as well. So Clarabelle's is where it's at when you're looking for a chilly sweet treat over there in Disney California Adventure. Next, we're headed to Tropical Hideaway in Disneyland. Thank goodness for this place, right? Now we don't have a Dole Whip line snaking around all of Adventureland anymore. So there's something really quaint and lovely about the Tropical Hideaway snack location. It makes me want to spend all day there. Perhaps it's the Jungle Cruise vibes. Jungle Cruise is right next door, of course. Or it's Rosita the bird telling corny jokes. But I think one of my favorite things about this place is the snacks. Tropical Hideaway has a variety of bao buns that, dare I say might be on the same level as our beloved cheeseburger pods in Disney's Animal Kingdom, maybe? Very least, there's at least more bao bun variety here with options like char siu pork, spiced vegetable, and the lime chicken bao. These bao buns are a great option if you have reservations for a table service restaurant later in the day that's past your normal lunchtime and you'd like something at least a little filling to hold you over until then. But let's not forget about the Dole Whips here either. Tropical Hideaway is the central location for Dole Whips in Disneyland right now. And they serve up that classic pineapple Dole Whip loved by both Disney World and Disneyland fans, but they also have special flavors too, like the chili mango whip made with pineapple and mango swirl dole whip, chamoy, mango, and chili lime seasoning. This next one is hands down something I have to get on every visit. It's the Choco Smash Bar at Pim Test Kitchen. And I don't know why more people don't talk about this all the time. What is so special about this candy bar? It's an Avengers themed candy bar and is absolutely massive. The Choco Smash Candy Bar is in Pim Test Kitchen at Avengers Campus. It's made with dark chocolate, peanuts, caramel, nougat, and chocolate brownie. It says peanuts. It doesn't say peanut butter in the description, but I swear there is peanut butter in there, like a whole big layer of it. I don't know. You guys can tell me what you think, but it sure seems like peanut butter to me. So. This is the brainchild of a Snickers, Three Musketeers, and Reese's Peanut Butter Cup all smashed together. Now, the Cocoa Smash is also celestial sized because this is the Pim Kitchen we're talking about. So, any food that's impacted by Pim particles is either going to be really, really big or really, really tiny. Just ask Ant Man, he'll tell you all about it. 
But basically, I'm glad that this one got the giant sized version instead of the tiny version because this is an unbelievable candy bar and it is not even that expensive. It's under 10 bucks. My goodness, please just go get this, even if you're all by yourself, especially if you're all by yourself. Now, Disneyland loves their chimichangas, and we do too. But one of our most recent go-tos, specifically speaking, one of our most recent morning go-tos is that breakfast chimichanga, which you can typically find around the cart closest to Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. The breakfast chimichanga is a hearty option filled with bacon, egg, and cheese. Simple, yet effective. Not to mention the fried outer shell helps give the softer scrambled eggs a much needed crunch. Though these chimichangas aren't like dripping in grease or anything, they are a little greasy. So if you're not a fan of that, you may want to grab something else for breakfast instead. But if you don't mind the grease, then grab yourself a couple of extra napkins and you are good to go. Okay, we've hit number 13 here, friends. So it is time for a little disagreement. I'll say disagreement. You know how when your parents are fighting and you're like, stop fighting. They're not fighting. We're having a discussion. That's what's going on here about the pastries from Jolly Holiday Bakery Cafe. Okay, this is an AJ versus Bria showdown of 2023. We're going to need your help settling this, so listen up. By the way, for those of you who don't know Bria, I haven't heard from her recently. She is the script writer here, so she and I collab on these videos very closely. Anyway, both of us can agree that Jolly Holiday Bakery Cafe is a nice little pit stop on Main Street, USA, and we grab a snack from the bakery display case, find a nice shaded seat outside, watch the parade, it's great but here's where we're at odds I say the best pastry here hands down is the Matterhorn macaroon you take oodles of coconut and butter you pile it high to resemble the Matterhorn dip it in white chocolate and create that snow-capped look and what's even better about them is that they're easy to preserve I have taken a Matterhorn macaroon home from Disneyland and eaten it a week later and it tastes just as good. So if you decide to save it for later and find it at the bottom of your park bag two weeks post trip, you can still eat it. It'll still be great. Now, Bria, on the other hand, says the best pastry here is the raspberry rose macaron with a raspberry rose almond filling that has a slight amaretto taste stuffed with fresh raspberries. The fresh fruit, the subtly sweet creamy center, the beautiful rosy coloring with all the fancy golden swipe. Honestly, what's not to love, says Bria. I personally think the raspberry rose macaron tastes like perfume. So I don't know. Help us settle the score. Are you team Matterhorn macaron or are you team raspberry rose macaron? Let us know in the comments down below and remember there is a right answer. All right, heading right across Main Street USA to the Plaza Inn. This is the part of our Disneyland video where I once again sing the praises of Plaza Inn's signature dish, their fried chicken. You can find other stuff here. They have pasta dishes. They have pot roast. It's a cafeteria. You can make your choice, but the fried chicken is and always has been where it's at. The Plaza's fried chicken always seems to come out super juicy and crispy with a nice golden fried batter covered in what Disney refers to as distinctive herbs and spices. Fine, Disney, keep your secrets. We'll just have to keep coming back for more fried chicken goodness to attempt to figure out what those spices truly are. But this is gonna come to you with mashed potatoes and vegetables. You are so, so healthy by eating this in Disneyland, so good for you. Next on our list, the corn dogs, of course. A big Disneyland snack staple is the hand-breaded corn dogs that never seem to let the corn dog aficionados down. When you go to the Little Red Wagon Cart in Main Street, USA, the Stage Door Cafe in Frontierland, or Corn Dog Castle over in Disney California Adventure, each of these locations is going to be able to hook you up with this traditional snack. But what's so special about these as opposed to any other corn dog you can pick up at your typical fast food location or in your grocer's freezer? Well, the quality, that's what. Since the corn dogs are hand dipped, they come out perfectly crunchy with a thick and tasty layer of that sweet corn batter surrounding the dog. And that dog to batter ratio is why this savory treat comes out on top time and time again. For a different corn dog variety, you can also try the cheddar cheese stick from Corn Dog Castle, which is literally exactly what it sounds like. Instead of a hot dog tucked into that same slightly sweet corn batter mentioned above, you got ooey gooey cheddar cheese and lots of it. I always just get both, but one more corn dog before we move on. There's a lot of them, okay? Corn Dog Castle is also home to the Hot Link corn dog, which is a spicy dog coated in that classic corn batter. So if you want a little more of a kick to go along with your otherwise tame, savory, sweet snack, 
the hot link option certainly does pack a punch. Now, I did mention beignets a little earlier when we were talking about Hungry Bear, so let's give them their due. Fried dough and powdered sugar, that's it, that's the tweet. Beignets have been another Disneyland fan favorite for many years now thanks to that classic golden fried dough generously dusted with powdered sugar. But even the non-traditional versions of this popular dessert have won over our hearts. We love seeing seasonal beignet options pop up on the menus too, like the pumpkin spice beignets that show up around the fall and the maple beignets that show up for the Christmas season. This year, the maple beignets even came with a new maple bacon dipping sauce that was so incredibly rich but still didn't manage to overpower the beignets. So 10 out of 10 would maple bacon again. Per the release of this video, the mint julep bar, which is where you'd normally find the Mickey beignets in Disneyland, is currently closed to accommodate the transformation of the French Market restaurant, which will soon become that brand new New Orleans inspired quick service Tiana's Palace going to open later this year. But Disney's already alerted all Mickey Beignet lovers that the Mint Julep Bar will reopen once again when Tiana's Palace is all built up and ready to go. In the meantime, you can still pick up those Mickey Beignets at the Royal Street Veranda over at New Orleans Square and or the Hungry Bear Restaurant. You never really know where they're going to be, but I think they're kind of ensconced in Hungry Bear for now. Or if you're just meandering around downtown Disney that day, you can also order some hot classic beignets from the Jazz Kitchen Coastal Grill and Patio too. Yes, that's Ralph Brennan's Jazz Kitchen. They just rebranded it. <laughs> but these ones won't be Mickey shaped, but they do have a whole kind of beignet kitchen there now with lots of different flavors. And I hope you weren't worried that we weren't going to get to this one. It is probably the best thing you can eat in Disneyland, and it's down at 17 on our list, but this is not a list that is ranked. These are just the things you have to eat. So now it's time to talk about the Monte Cristo sandwich at Cafe Orleans. We've talked about golden fried batter. We've talked about powdered sugar. But what if we took the two concepts and made them into a sandwich now, the Monte Cristo sandwich at Cafe Orleans in Disneyland Park is that meal you get when you want to eat your dessert at the same time as your main entree, and it is phenomenal. We're talking about sliced turkey, ham, and Swiss cheese, battered and fried, then sprinkled with powdered sugar and served up with seasonal preserves. The Monte Cristo is also available at Blue Bayou in New Orleans Square, but keep in mind that it'll be more expensive at Blue Bayou as opposed to Cafe Orleans, 29 bucks versus 22 bucks, and Blue Bayou only serves up the Monte Cristo during lunch while Cafe Orleans serves it all day long. But if you haven't been to Disneyland for a while, you may be surprised after the pandemic closure when everything reopened, Cafe Orleans started serving the Monte Cristo a little bit differently. You used to get twice as much as you get now, and the goal was always to order the Monte Cristo and the palm frites, which come with that amazing remoulade. Now you're going to get half the Monte Cristo but it's gonna come with palm frites. I think this is because people kept ordering just the Monte Cristo and palm frites and sharing it between two people. So now Disney gets to get money from both people instead of just the one order. But that's kind of what's going on now. Still, it's a plenty of food and it's still just as delicious as it used to be. Next on our list, churros. How many people out there have or have known a person who bit into a Disney World churro only to have gone, eh, the ones in Disneyland are 10 times better? Well, that's because Disneyland has elevated the churro to an art form. First and foremost, even the classic churro, a fried dough stick coated in cinnamon and sugar, just, I don't know, tastes better in Disneyland? They're crispy on the outside, soft on the inside, satisfyingly sweet all over. I don't know, it's anecdotal, but it feels true. So the snack is so popular on its own that there are several carts across both Disneyland and DCA dedicated to just churros. So you don't have to worry about accidentally overlooking them. They have ways of finding you, which sounds creepier than I intended, but you know what I mean. But the churros in Disneyland don't stop there. They also regularly put out new and interesting flavor varieties depending on the season. For example, you can currently order a purple Disney 100 churro at the Town Square and Tomorrowland churro carts which is rolled in cherry sugar, served with white icing, and topped with purple and silver pearls. In the past, we've seen the peach cobbler churros at the Redwood Creek Challenge Trail Churro Cart in DCA, fluffernutter churros topped with peanut butter sauce, marshmallow fluff, and chocolate chips at Willie's Churro Cart in DCA, pain and panic themed churros for Oogie Boogie Bash, it's so many churros, y'all. Whatever dessert flavors tend to be your favorite, there's a very high chance Disneyland's made it into a churro option at some point in time. They're also doing savory churros now. We saw Hot Cheetos churro the other day, so definitely check it out and see what's on the list when you're there. 
So let's head over to Lamplight Lounge in Disney California Adventure. One of the best parts about Lamplight Lounge and Pixar Pier is just being there. It's chill, there's Pixar animation sketches everywhere, you can sip on fruity cocktails, and depending on where you're seated, you might also get a pretty good view out across that lake area. But when you need something to help soak up the booze and keep your stomach satisfied for the time being, the potato skins can be a great choice for a quick bite. These are not your average french fries, my friends. These are Yukon gold potatoes served with brown butter, caper yogurt, smoked paprika aioli, and manchango cheese. I don't know why they are so good. I cannot tell you, but when I first had them, when this place first opened, they bowled me over and I still love them. There's some sort of magic in these. Keep in mind that you're not gonna get like a basket full of these potato skins. You're gonna get a blast of unique flavors in just a few hearty bites. If you want a bigger lounge bite option at Lamplight Lounge that you'll really be able to split among your group, then the lobster nachos might be a better choice. Now, these came over from Cove Bar when it was changed over into Lamplight from the former occupant. Everybody loved the lobster nachos. People were freaked out when they closed Cove Bar that they would lose the lobster nachos, but they are still on the menu. And by the way, you can also substitute chicken on these as well if you're not a lobster fan. But anyway, these come with warm lobster chunks, black beans, aged cheddar Oaxaca cheese sauce, shredded cheese blend, pico de gallo, sliced serrano chilies, and chipotle crema. Little DFB tidbit for you, if you want that perfect chip to topping ratio of these nachos, you can always order the nachos and ask for the toppings separate. That way, if someone in your group doesn't like the black beans, but someone else does, you can customize the chips however you want and still make everyone happy. So how about one more bonus Lamplight Lounge option for you before we move on? As it turns out, Lamplight Lounge can be a rather sneaky place with secret specialty drink items. Now this secret menu isn't new, it's been around since Cove Bar as well, and everybody loves these. Now because this is a secret menu, the drinks here have the possibility to come and go, but it's always worth asking about what's available during your next Lamplight Lounge visit. My favorite is the Mickey Fun Wheel. Now, we've got to give a little of our airtime here to the seasonal treats in Disneyland. For such a small place, Disneyland goes all out with the specialty items. There are two exclusive annual treats I've got to shout out to. One is for the Christmas season and one is for Easter. For Christmas, Candy Palace in Disneyland and Trolley Treats in DCA serve those hand-rolled candy canes. Now, I'm not talking about those bulk package candy canes you're going to find on the shelves of your typical big box store. These things are handmade in the shop. They measure about 18 inches long. They are absolutely massive. And they put those mass-produced candy canes to shame. These candy canes are only made on select days throughout the holiday season. And when they are available, they sell out fast. Yep, they're that good. But don't worry, we'll let you know on the DFB website when these peppermint goodies are expected to pop up when we learn about their 2023 schedule. Now, Easter has a similar dessert situation. The handmade chocolate fudge Easter eggs are sold at Candy Palace each spring for a limited time. So what's so special about these? Well, they are huge. They come with cute spring garnishes, usually in the flower variety, and the center of the egg changes, so you never know what fudge flavor you're going to have the privilege of biting into. Our historic favorite has got to be the peanut butter fudge, and that continues to be one of the rotating flavors, but again, they make a different flavor every week, so you never really know what you're going to get. Sometimes they make a couple of flavors every week, so head into Candy Palace and ask them what's coming up on the schedule. This year, the fudgy eggs were sold every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, starting mid-March and leading up until Easter. But they do sell out fast, and usually a line forms first thing in the morning as soon as the park opens so that people can get their Easter eggs. Now, the day that I was in Disneyland to get my Easter egg, I headed over around noon, and they were already gone. So I don't know what to tell you. You gotta be first. And if you don't believe something made with asparagus could ever be considered your favorite Disneyland snack, just you wait, because the Bengal Barbecue Quick Service in Adventureland is going to change your mind. Bengal Barbecue is home of several tasty skewer selections, but our favorite of the bunch is the safari skewer, or essentially asparagus wrapped in bacon. See, wrap something in bacon and it automatically tastes better. That's scientifically proven 
by me. Mix the fresh asparagus with the salty, chewy bacon, char them both to until they've got a nice smoky flavor, and you've got a savory snack that'll make you brag to your family that yes, you did indeed eat your vegetables while you were at Disneyland. But there's lots of other stuff going on at Bengal Barbecue too. Try all the skewers. It's probably some of the healthier food you're gonna eat in Disneyland. That's not a slight. Disneyland's got great food and they've got really good fresh and healthy food. But this is something that you can kind of please both sides of the coin. You can eat something relatively healthy and it can be real food and not like preservative food and it's just absolutely delicious so go get those bengal barbecue skewers and you've got a bunch of protein fueling the rest of your disneyland day Okay, I could add 50 more items to this list right now. You and I both know this. That's how good so much of the food in Disneyland really is. We didn't even go to the table service restaurants here. We didn't even hit downtown Disney, really. There is so much more to talk about. Maybe we need a part two. I don't know. Let us know. But also, you guys are huge Disneyland food fans, too. So drop in the comments what you love to eat at Disneyland. That'll definitely help everybody who's coming by to watch plan in their Disneyland trip because they get to hear from all of the experts, you guys. Now, if you want to keep learning about all the best eats and sweets around the Anaheim parks, keep tuning in with your DFB pals. We're going to keep feeding you the good stuff. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and we'll see you real soon.